today we're doing brakes and a wheel bearing Ford F-150 2017 this is an eco boost truck so we just had the differential done for this customer we took it to a local shop and did it because I don't really have the space to do big jobs like that but he came back to me for this so right now I just got done disconnecting all of this so this is your wheel bearing it is underneath all your brakes let me show you what I did so there are three eight millimeter bolts that hold this heat shield on heat shield we'll slide in there and kind of just sit like that here's a brake rotor that thing is pretty typical it slides off after you take this caliper bracket and the caliper off uh, two 21 millimeter bolts and two 13 millimeter bolts. You can see, I haven't taken the brake pads out yet. I just took the caliper off, so. Caliper will sit right here when the rotor's on, and that's what stops your vehicle. There's plenty of videos out here on this. I'm just kind of showing you how I'm doing it. There's an eight millimeter bolt here. It's pushed in here, it's clipped in here. And then there's another clip up here you have to pull out. And then it's plugged in, you gotta pop the hood all the way up here this pin is kind of a pain in the butt if you can see if you can get to it and push that collar back then it gets a little bit easier but it was kind of stuck in there so it fought me a little that's okay we got it out and now in the process of pulling this cable all the way out like so you can see there's a fine little bit of minnesota rust on here so let me show you how i deal with it Oh, 13 millimeter guy. So it's right on there. It's kind of comical that Ford F 150 truck has the smallest lock nut known to man on there. So we have a, the back, these are a little bit beefier. These are an 18 millimeter socket for these bolts. There's four of them. There's two on this side. And there's two on this back side here that I will show you in a second. It helps if you can turn the steering wheel because you can move the steering wheel back and forth to give yourself easier access to the bolts. I should be starting with the other side because it is harder to get to and you always do the harder side first, but I'm done. Don't do what I do. All that good stuff. It's not even that bad. I love these things. You used to be able to get them from Harbor Freight. I don't know if you still can. Most of my tools I buy from Harbor Freight because, you know, no one's got money for high end anything anymore, right? Shake your camera more. Yada yada. Whenever I'm doing one of these and I take the last bolt out and I can already see light through it, I think to myself, sweet. This should just pop right out of there. So let me wrangle this cord. I have it pinned right now so I can get everything out of there if I had to hammer on it. Still might, but let me get this cord out of here. Or should I just pull it? I don't know. Still needs a little bit of hammering. It helps. There we go. There, it just pops out like that. So I'm gonna get this cord unwrapped from where I have it pinned right now. And then I'll pull this out and I'll show the new one on. <laughs> I haven't really shown this going on. Um, I didn't have enough hands to film it, but you gotta line this shaft up with the hole here. Get this started. You don't have to push it all the way flush, like kind of get the gears lined up and meshed up and then get a couple bolts started and then very easily start to bring it in. So I did this bottom bolt down here and this top bolt here and I started to, to work it in nice and flush until I could feel those teeth kind of grab in there and, and start to sink itself in. If you feel it binding up at all, if you feel that bolt tightening up before it should stop, um, pull it back out, you know, get it, get it in there to where it lines up right. Then I got this bolt in there tight and then this bottom one is hand tight. I got to turn the wheel. So these two are tight. I'm going to turn the wheel right now and get these two tight. Uh, and then I'll start putting together the brakes with new stuff. Putting this back together should be pretty straightforward. Cut that eight millimeter bolt back in there. You want to put this all back together too, because you don't want this getting caught up in the rotating assembly. Show everybody. Just like that. One more that goes in here under under this line. Like so 
wall. Ooh, nice and dusty. And that goes right there. Uh, should be able to reach up and find it from the top. into there, tuck it back in, get it refastened. I'm going to have to zip tie it, but it'll be fine stuff back there. It's got enough support that I know it's not going to go anywhere, and then I can start putting the brakes back together. Simple C-clamp is usually all you need to do a brake job, other than that and some hand tools. I won't go in a little bit. You see how this one's moving and this one's not, so I'm going to go back and forth. So I'm going to take the C-clamp loose in a little bit. I'm going to go over this one, push this one in. you got to do that like two or three times until they're flush. You always use an old pad, so you don't have to worry about scuffing up the piston. This one, I realized what was going on. The piston was stuck on the brake pad itself. So these pistons, these brakes were not good anyway. I'm gonna save the caliper, I guess. You just keep doing that until it's all, all the way back in on both of them, and then you can start putting it back together with the new pads and the new rotor. Also, before I forget, don't you forget. We're just getting these guys in. And basically, they don't always want to go in. Sometimes they fight you. I'm just going to hook it under and push it right in there. So, I just repeat that on all of them. So they look like so. And then, you always want to make sure that these are, are moving freely and you always want to grease them when you can. If these are stiff or they feel kind of grimy at all, definitely take them out and clean them and or replace them. Um, these are what's responsible for everything moving and your brake pads wearing evenly when it's all together. So. I finished putting this together, we're going to throw the new pads in it, and we're going to get back on the car. A lot of uh, pads won't tell you this. This actually tells you, you know, what side or what area you should be doing. Right? So inner left hand, inner right hand, and then I think all the outers are the same. Um, these things, sometimes when they, they get shipped to you, they're all, like, made not here in America. And so sometimes in powder coating, they powder coat too much on here. So what I will tell you is if you've got like a little bit of emery cloth or sandpaper and it's not going together and it's fighting you and you hate yourself, take all these clips back out, sand down in here and back of these clips, sand this all to like bare metal. You can paint over it if you want and then put the clips back in uh, and then apply a little bit of grease to each of the inside of here. And then also you can see where the powder coating I don't know if it'll focus. We'll get sometimes kind of thick on the end of these when, when they're running through the processing of making them. And so a lot of times I'll suggest people just kind of sand off this area too. Um, take it down to bare metal just until you start to get it to move in here. And it should move in here pretty freely. You shouldn't just, shouldn't have to fight to get it in. You shouldn't be bending your brackets. You shouldn't have to be smacking it with a hammer. These should go in and out of here pretty easily. If not, you're going to have some brake binding issues and you're going to run into trouble down the road. So these are all fitting really nice. Um, this one just went right in. I'm gonna put this one in. We're gonna throw it back in the car. Do everything right. Should line up really well. Should have no bolts left over. Everything should turn nice and freely. I gotta check the gap on this. Get these tight. Make sure that we're not rubbing on the heat shield because a lot of times you'll do this and this heat shield will get bent just a little bit. You can see it's kind of. Pretty tight tolerances to that rotor, so you want to make sure that the customer is not going to go down with all these brand new parts and hear their rotor scrape it on that dust shield because trust me, they will complain. Maybe not even your customer. You don't want your own vehicle making that damn noise, right? Sometimes I'm envious of all the free help sleeper dude has. <sighs> Doesn't make me want to have kids though. <laughs> Alright, let me check this clearance, make sure everything's rolling alright. Uh... Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. Can I pull it with this hand? Yeah, no. Okay, I think that should be good. I'm gonna sell a tire on it and we're gonna call this one good. She's all connected.